Good morning and welcome to our service, uh, half past ten service and the first Sunday in Advent, the start of our new church year. For anyone that doesn't recognise me from that previous video, I'm Bob, I'm a reader and ordinand here at St Andrews and if it's your first time online with us this morning, a very, very warm welcome and a warm welcome to everybody else as well. We've had a few notices, Jo is in the building, she's going to give us some more notices later on at the end, towards the end of our service, but just a couple of things uh, to say. Tuesday evening at half past seven on Zoom is the first of our Advent conversations. So if you'd like details of how to join that, have a look in the church email or get in contact with us. We'd love to see you on Zoom on Tuesday evening. And on Wednesday evening, there is no quiz. We're doing it every two weeks. The building this morning is open for donations of your toys after the service. Toys are being donated through to Radcliffe Food Bank. So if you're able to come in and donate your toys after the service this morning, that would be lovely. And at the same time, you can pick up uh, a nativity costume to help us put our nativity together. This Advent, we meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns and turns us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, may we be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. During Advent, we're going to be lighting our Advent candle, which Joe is going to do for us. And we're going to use the lighting of the Advent candle as a way of coming before God and saying sorry for not living in the light of Christ. So let's just pause for a moment as we consider the light and consider our own lives. When the Lord comes, he will bring light to, to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The other thing that we're doing during Advent is we are going to have some Advent testimonies. So we've been asking people to share their favourite carol and to say why it's their favourite carol and what difference it makes knowing Jesus at this time of Christmas. And so it seems fitting that we ha when we're talking about carols that our very special testimony this morning comes from Carol, Carol Barlow. Oh, Carol, it's lovely to see you, even if it's outside. Yeah. So how has lockdown been for you? Boring. <laughs> Boring. I'm, I, do, uh, I do a lot of colouring in. Colouring in pictures and yeah. missing my friends. I don't, well, I don't miss work, but I miss my workmates. Yeah. But, uh, we're entering Advent and what do we sing at Christmas? <laughs> Carols! <laughs> <laughs> 
So Carol, what is your favourite carol? Away in the manger. Away in the manger. What's the carol about? It's about Jesus, this one. And he was born in Bethlehem. Mm. He was born in the stable. What's her name? Mary and Joseph. What does Jesus mean to you? Well, I'd say God's changed my life. He's made me more respectable. An elderly person gets on the bus, I stand up and it's full. So, yeah, yes, it's changed my life. Yes. Finally, what are you praying for at this time? Well, that all this fighting stops all over the world. Um, well, they have, a, they have a cure, but you've just got to wait and see how it works out, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, Carol, thank you so much. It's been great spending time with you. We miss you. Thank you, Carol. And let's just um, pray for Carol now. Lord, thank you for Carol. Thank you for her testimony. And thank you for her faithful witness to you. Thank you that she loves you so much and that she knows you. Be with her this morning and always. Amen. And because Carol identified uh, Way in a Manger as her favourite carol, we're going to sing that now. But we're going to sing the first verse of it uh, to remind ourselves about what we're preparing for to celebrate at Christmas. And then we're going to continue that song into the words of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. While we're singing, I apologise now, we've got a bit of a buzz. I know that. Um, we're, trying to, we're trying to sort that out. So we'll pl please bear with us as we uh, spend a bit of time and we'll, we'll do that while we're singing. Away in a manger and O come, O come, Emmanuel. <laughs>
So this morning we're starting a new series of readings for Christmas and we're thinking about the miracle of Christmas and Rainer is going to read us the word of God now. The reading is from Galatians 1 to 20. What I'm saying is that age he is no different from a slave although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. I plead with you, brothers and sisters, like me, for I became like you. You did me no wrong. As you know, it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. And even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I was an angel of God, as if I were Christ Jesus himself. Where, then, is your blessing of me now? I can testify that, if you could have done so, you would have torn out your eyes and given them to me. Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? Those people are zealous to win you over but for no good for what they want is to alienate you from us so that you may have the zeal for them it is fine to be zealous provided the purpose is good and it to be so also not just when i am with you my dear children for when whom i am again in the pains of childbirth until christ is formed in you how i wish i could be with you now and change my tone, because I am perplexed about you. Good morning everyone, I'm Karen and I'm part of St Andrew's Church family. It's lovely to be with you on this first Sunday in Advent. Some of you may know that one of the things I do through my work is help people to become more mindful and in the moment. And as a Christian, my aim is to practice being mindful of the presence of God in each and every moment. The present is called that for a reason. It's a gift and it's a gift from God. And every single moment we are gifted with is a tiny miracle. God breathed life into us and Jesus came and was born among us so that we could live life and live it in abundance. And living that life free in Christ is the subject of our reading today. It's part of Paul's letter to the church in Galatia. We still aren't quite sure who Paul was writing to in Galatia. We know that the region of Galatia was located in North Central Asia Minor and it was written around 50 years after the crucifixion of Christ. Paul has left Galatia and a party of Christ believers, often called the Circumcision Party, has convinced Gentile members of the church whom Paul has brought into faith that true believers in Christ must follow the Jewish law. So, along with following Christ, pressure is on them to also practice a number of elements of the Jewish laws that many of the readers had been brought up with. For example, the rite of circumcision. Paul has learned of this and his letter outlines really quite angrily his opposition to Gentile adherence to the Jewish law, especially the practice of circumcision. 
His letter reveals the difficulty in negotiating the relationship between being a Jew or a Gentile and simultaneously being, follow, being a follower of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I can almost see Paul with his head in his hands in frustration. No wonder he says he's perplexed. He must want to shake them, but all he can do is send a letter and hope that they get it. I can understand how frustrated he must have felt. To address this, Paul reminds his readers what the coming of Christ meant for Jew and Gentile alike. And the key word is freedom. And of course, freedom in Christ doesn't mean do what you like. But the Galatians were being pushed to revert to the old ways of keeping the law, which meant they lost the freedom, the very freedom that Christ came to bring. True freedom brings liberation from the demands of the law or anything that binds or ties us down unhelpfully into the glorious freedom of being children of God living responsibly and joyfully for Christ. In our scripture we hear, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child, and since you are his child, God has also made you his heir. Forgive the non-gender inclusive language, but what Paul is saying is that what Jesus did for us, that's the church of Galatia, but also for us today, meant we became God's children, and not just his children, but his heirs. The miracle of the moment is that the kingdom of heaven became ours, because just at the right time, God sent his son. The moment in eternity when the course of human history was changed forever. The miracle of Jesus' birth and through his coming, living, dying and rising, God adopts us into his family. As children and heirs of all God's promises. Amazing. What happened changed everything. Forever. Jesus gave his all and we were the ones to benefit. We no longer had to observe all the practices that the law had insisted upon, shackled and strictured. They, we, were made completely free. Free by faith in Jesus Christ. Our salvation, their salvation, not dependent on keeping a long list of rules in the hope of a place in God, with God in eternity. It's a free gift, a present bought with the precious blood of Christ. Yet here they are returning to old habits. And we still do it ourselves. Well, I know I do. I can be guilty of thinking God expects things of me. That is not who God is. He is Abba, Father, not a tyrant. Those things that we feel we should do ought to come instead from a natural outpouring of the inpouring love of Jesus, not duty or law. Although Bill and I haven't been doing the discipleship course with you all, we've been catching up by ourselves. The session on righteousness struck me as a fresh revelation. Paul says to the Philippians in chapter 3, verse 9, Not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. This is what Paul is also trying to tell the Galatians. Honestly, you fools, can't you see? Don't you know? You're making yourself slaves again instead of recognising you are God's precious children. Your freedom is a gift. All you need to be righteous in God's sight is faith in his son. But the saying goes that there are none so blind as those who refuse to see. For centuries the Jewish had been wondering when the Messiah would come. Yet the Jews didn't recognise him when he did. Do we recognise our freedom in Christ? As Christians we are so blessed. 
We live in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Yet even knowing that it is difficult at this time, living through lockdown and a global pandemic, praying prayers and perhaps feeling God isn't answering them. Though the good news of different vaccines being available is on the horizon. This offers hope and potential freedom, freedom after months of limitation, lockdowns and uncertainty. This is truly answer to prayer. We thank God for the skills and persistence of scientists and researchers. In Psalm 31 verse 15, the psalmist says, my times are in your hands and we are in God's strong, capable hands. No matter the chaos and pain in the world around us, God has given us the gift of life, the miracle of life and the privilege of being his precious children. We need to value and appreciate that even when humanly that feels impossible because God is good all the time. And Jesus came so that we, his brothers and sisters, might have life and life in abundance. I want to finish by reading you a really lovely poem written by the very gifted Dave Hopwood. Some of you may have read his books. I hope it's a gift to you. It was to me, a reminder of the miracle of each moment. The moment. Easy to miss the moment. I do it all the time. Too busy waiting for the next thing to appreciate the real thing. Too busy making plans to appreciate the life around, the colours, the mist, the leaves, the gifts of the now. Being still just for a glimpse of time, knowing rather than hurrying by. Easy to miss the moment, to miss the glorious works of creation, the tiny and the tremendous, the creator's signature in a dab of rain, or a smudge of colour in the sound of the silence. Yes, sometimes a difficult melody, but at times a symphony of calm. So busy getting things done in life that I miss the most important thing, life. So God, thank you for the miracles contained within each moment. Thank you for the miraculous moment when your son came to earth and in this Advent period, as we wait and prepare to celebrate that day, be with us, we pray, make us mindful of your presence and fill us with hope, comfort and joy in our, in our circumstance. Amen. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, He chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, Still your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth You paid it all for me You have been so, so kind
Good morning, let us pray. If you can use the responses, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, in this world of uncertainty, we give you thanks and praise that you are always there when we need you. Thank you for bringing us hope and we ask you to lighten the darkness and bring joy to our lives. We pray that our nations will be transformed so that hope would spread into every corner of our land so that it can flourish with the preaching of your word and the praising of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we bring before you our government. We pray that they will be consistent in all that they do. Give them strength and wisdom every day and be with them in their decision making as they carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, in these times of change, we bring before you the church. Fill it with peace and unite us in love. We pray for vision in our churches. May we who enjoy so rich an inheritance of faith work together to share with those who do not know you. Bless and guide our church leaders as they lead your people. Give them wisdom and insight and integrity, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hope, we pray for Joe and the leaders and the congregation here at St Andrews. We give you thanks for the many gifts and talents that we all have. And we give you praise for the way in, the, in which we've been able to meet together in this way. Build your church, Lord. Make us strong, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, give us compassion and empathy that we need to understand the needs of our community. Show us how to serve with humility and kindness so that we can offer friendship to all. Open our eyes and our ears, Lord Jesus, as we look beyond ourselves and share in the lives of others. Help us to be sensitive to your presence and give heed to your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we thank you that our hope for healing is in you. And so now we know that we can come before you for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. So we bring to you those who just need your touch or they need healing at this time. Pour out your spirit upon them and strengthen those who care for them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, we pray for those who have recently lost loved ones. Surround their families and friends with your love. Strengthen them with the gift of faith and give to their troubled hearts the light of hope so their tears may be wiped away. Lift their eyes so that they may catch a glimpse of eternity and be comforted by the promise of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, help us to grow in faith, wisdom and love. We pray that we will know your will for our lives. Help us to be strong and courageous in our faith and remain steadfast in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
done on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we've come to our notices and uh, yes, I am wearing my big fat jacket because uh, it's cold in here. Um, so yes, anyway, uh, it's our toy donation in church, 11.30 till one. Uh, please do come and bring your toy donations. Uh, there will also be an opportunity for you to pick up any nativity costumes, um, any Christmas masks that you might want to purchase. And also there will be an opportunity for you to pray and um, the um, and there was one other thing hmm. oh and if you ha um, haven't done your photo of joy yet uh, we have made a, an opportunity for you to have your photo taken with joy uh, next Sunday, we will be opening up at 11.30 till 1, um, one or 2, uh, depending on how, how the demand goes for remembrance. That time where we can come into church, thank God for those who are no longer with us and thank God for their lives and for all that they have meant to us. Then the week after that, we will be opening church again, 11.30 till 1, and we will be inviting you to donate your own Christmas tree decoration, and you'll have an opportunity to put the decoration onto the tree. Thank you so much for all your pictures of joy. Um, it's been a joy getting them. And after this service, we'll go to the opening slide rather than the final slide so that you get to see all those photos. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy seeing one another on there. I'm going to extend the deadline for those photos um, so that we'll have an extra week to collect those in. Thank you so much for the videos of the passing on the star. Hopefully in this week's envelope that you received through the post, um, you'll be able to make a star and then record a star. I've had one video of um, um, a, a group of theatre nurses doing it in hospital. Uh, so that's really exciting. So thank you to the church member who invited work colleagues to join in with that. Um, also to say in terms of passing the star, if you know someone from the church family um, and they are unable to video themselves, um, please would you offer to go and do it with them, record outside to keep both of yourselves um, safe. But if you can help one another so that we can see as many faces um, at Christmas um, together would be amazing. This week in the envelopes, you received uh, four tea lights and we're inviting you to pray for the NHS and indeed for the vaccines that are coming our way and pray that God uh, would continue to work amongst us to bring healing. And uh, if you've got young children, you might want to do that at tea time with them. And uh, we'll, at eight o'clock, um, we'll invite everyone else to light them. And then for those of you that might want to join us, you can join us for evening prayer at 8.15. Please do keep your eye on the church update email. I know that sometimes it goes into junk um, or it goes into trash. Please do look at um, for that. That should be coming out on about Wednesday because we're having PCC on Monday where we'll be making um, some significant decisions at that meeting. So do look out for that. And that's the way that you'll know what's going on at church. So birthdays, we have a number of birthdays this week. Uh, we've got Harry Downs, uh, Joanne Hayes, our own lovely Bob May and Tia Latham Holt, George and Susan. Happy birthday to all of you and hope that you have a fantastic day. And so we're going to take this opportunity now to thank God for all that he gives to us. Thank God for his financial provision and thank, we're going to thank him for the provision that has come in for our church family and that we can use it wisely. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the one who provides all that we need. Thank you, Father, that you are the one who gives to us first. Lord, as we give by standing order, by envelopes, by cash giving, 
I pray, Father, that as a church council and a church family, we would use this, these gifts wisely and for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so as we've uh, started in Advent, we are going to worship the splendour of the King. The splendour of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light the darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? Oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God indeed. We're coming towards the end of our services. Please do stay on and watch through the notices again. A huge thanks to our tech team, rubbing their hands, trying to keep warm here. Great Craig this morning. Um, it reminds me of that Peter Kay joke where um, someone messages the cinema operator and says, hey man, Studio 7's buzzing. And he goes, oh, thanks man. I don't think we were buzzing in that way, but we'll get the buzz sorted out. A final blessing as we go. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path. 
and make us ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and all those whom we love, now and always. Amen. As we wait for our coming Saviour, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.